roots start up there. That's, That's how deep not it was. It's going to turn green until it comes in contact with the light. Yeah. yeah. Sure. It's like information that you can use. A, it's like, ooh, it's a little too deep. Yeah, I was just looking at it when it, well, for us, that would be deep. But then, you know, maybe you need to plant it that deep, yeah? It just means it used that much energy before it could photosynthesize. Mm -hmm. oh, and, it, yeah. and, it, and it can't use any of that material. Land of some other kind. Yeah. Whatever was there before. Right from last that, year. <laughs> mm -hmm. Actually, you can just see, you can just see the growing points down here, little white bits. Mm -hmm. Just see the tips, root tips, just growing at the bottom. So whatever you know, if you it look is, at it really closely, you can see the yeah. all the white root tips. But then at, the more they've been growing, like like these ones up here, they, you know, they've got heaps of soil. Look how much soil they've got clusters. They look like octopus or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> does. They're fantastic. Oh, that's, that's, that's great really, really hear. good. <laughs> yeah, great. I should take a photo of those roots because mm. it's not just going to stick there oh. unless there's some sticky substance that makes it stick there. So there's polysaccharides, which is just basically complex sugar compounds that, that form that sticky stuff. And they're produced by bacteria, mostly, but also by fungi. But um, they're just taking those soil particles and sticking them, you know, around those roots like that. So that's actually putting carbon into the soil. That whole process is carbon coming out of these green plants that are photosynthesizing. So they're putting, the, putting that carbon into the soil. Mm. So that's not like organic matter that comes from like this stuff. You know, that's not like this breaking down in the soil. Right. So it's producing carbon. Is it creating its own, so to speak, or not the really? Point, well, the plant is, but it's taking it out of the it's carbon coming, dioxide. Oh. Coming out of the roots. Yeah, it's carbon dioxide being turned into sugar in the process of photosynthesis. Oh. And then coming out of the plant roots and make it, and feeding the bacteria mostly that produce those sticky substances that stick the soil to the roots. Mm. And it's um, like the reason that sometimes you get better water use efficiencies with plants is because these can then form little lumps. See that one? Like there's like a lump forming there, mm -hmm. like an aggregate. Over time, if you've got plants that the roots there for a long time, like especially with perennial plants, you know, they'll form aggregates with all that sticky substance. So they'll be those lumps in the soil. And they, the moisture content inside those aggregates is higher than it is outside the aggregates. So that's much, the water that falls or that you irrigate with, put into the water, in, you know, add as irrigation water, can, if when it gets inside those aggregates, will stay there for longer. Oh. Then it will just like, like in this. Polymer. Well, I mean, this soil here is just going to lose moisture really quickly, mm -hmm. obviously. And the closer to the surface it is, the more quickly it's going to evaporate. Right. So the better aggregated the soil is, even when you apply water, it's going to go deeper faster. So it's going to be further from the surface. Oh, get it away from. Away from evaporation. evaporation. You want to try and get it away from the heat of the sun that's going to evaporate it. Yeah. It's like heat turns water, you know, vaporizes water. Yeah. Bugs that are in the soil like it deeper where it's cooler in it too? They've to a certain extent and that depends on how um, well structured the soil is because they need they need to be in an aerobic environment so they, they need oh, oxygen. So, so the further somewhat. you get from the surface the less the oxygen concentration will be and importantly the less the nitrogen concentration will be as well because you want um, they, these are all, these are actually fixing nitrogen inside really? those riser sheets. Yeah, just the oh, same yeah. as in a nodule on a leaky. Because mm -hmm. if that's green, that means it's got chlorophyll in it, and chlorophyll is always associated with a protein. You know things go yellow if they're low in protein, or low in nitrogen, don't you? You get mm -hmm. yellow leaves if it's low in nitrogen. Right. So if it's nice green leaves like that, but you probably put nitrogen under this. Did you plant nitrogen under yeah. it? You didn't. Yeah. Oh, well, that's good. Okay, so all the green that's in that plant then came from from basically well scavenging end that's in the soil or fixing nitrogen inside those riser sheets. Is that always assumed that it was just residual from what was in the seed? No. Well it's interesting because <laughs> residual from what was in the seed. Mm -hmm. Really? It's really okay. interesting what that's doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sending up new shoots. Yeah. <laughs> what a fascinating grass. But that's doing the same thing anyway as your crop. Like I mean, where's this getting its nitrogen? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's um, it's obviously, I'd say, well, obviously, it's been affected by the cold, I'd say. But look at the colour of these leaves here. Yeah, they're green. You know, you're not ever putting nitrogen on here. No, just, you know, there might be a little blows over here. 
Yeah. But I mean, anywhere you went, you could go hundreds of miles from anywhere, yeah. and you'll find green grasses. Right. So if this is if this is if this is protein that makes it green, and it's not a legume, where's it's getting it then? Mm -hmm. In a, in a in a field that had never ever been fertilised, for example. Yeah. 